So, I want to go over people that are negative, people that are pretty delusional to the reality of other people with really elite or good genetics, above average genetics, above average response to training, diet, steroids, all that stuff. Obviously, it's rampant on social media. There's always very negative people that if you post a natural athlete or someone claims natural or, or takes this minimal amount of product that it's BS. Nine times out of 10, whenever you go and lurk their page, their Instagram will, first of all, it's usually private or blocked. So it, it's, they're just kind of like a fake account or they're trolling or whatever. But if you do actually see their pictures, most, most of the time, they don't have much of a physique. There's not much of a build there. Obviously, they're genetically inferior or they just have the wrong genes. Now, here's the deal. My question is, I always wonder where were some of these people brought up? Like, what kind of school did they go to? Was it a small populated school? Was it, were they not in sports? Or were they unaware of certain athletes around them? I say this because from where I went to school and went to high school, even middle school, uh, I was always surrounded with different athletes that I got to firsthand witness and experience some of their genetic, genetic gifts. Uh, I remember in, in high school specifically, in sophomore and junior year, so 10th and 11th grade, uh, there was one individual, and I remember this very clearly because I'm so uh, anal about like stats and body composition, all this stuff, and I was heavily into bodybuilding even in high school. My friend was a football player, he was a fullback, and he was five foot 11 inches. He was 208 pounds with a legitimate body fat caliper reading of 8%. And this is an 8% that was back then and it reasons to stand today because I know what body fat looks like from training so many people. Lower back had virtually no fat on it. His ab skin folds were very thin. Um, he had really round muscle bellies. His delts were so profound and capped. And I was already into bodybuilding for at least 12 months into it by that time. And the thing with me, I was only into bodybuilding. I didn't do any other sports, no football, no nothing, because I was so obsessive with that. I got very educated and smart at a young age with nutrition, so I was at school with my protein every two hours and eating diligently and all that stuff while I had really good results. This gentleman that was my friend blew me away. Even though I gained like 70 pounds or whatnot just from training and having the hormone response at a young age, this, this guy just looked visually bigger with his round delts and his billowing quads and he was such a great athlete, a great fullback, and he actually did, he sprinted too for track. And he would eat minuscule amounts of food. He would have daily doubles, he'd have catabolic muscle breakdown daily doubles of football, three hour practices twice a day in the hot summer. And he would barely weight train with just obviously the big three deadlift and all that stuff is not conducive to bodybuilding, but he would look like a bodybuilder. Gibson. Gibson, that was his name. And there's another gentleman as well um, he was also very athletic. He could he could slam dunk a basketball. He had at like five foot six inches. Uh, he was round. He, had, he was. He, these people were not doing anything crazy. They weren't taking any supplements or anything like that. They were just genetically inborn with innate potential to grow. They were mesomorphic natural bodybuilders. And I saw this firsthand. It was really nice for me to witness this because it set me up for my future of bodybuilding because I knew that these people existed at a young age because I saw it. And But I was, I was okay with that and I knew what I had to do for myself and make the best of what I could do with my own physique and my genetics. So I wonder with these people that are so negative, are they just so tunnel vision that they don't understand their surroundings that there are genetic anomalies out there, that people that just are better. That's just a, a, a cold hard fact for some people to accept. Um, now, a lot of times you'll see people say, well, you know, there's no way he could be natural because he has this feature or that feature or whatever. A lot, a lot of times these guys that even I train that are natural, their stats, if you break them down, five foot 10, five foot 11, 180 pounds, but they have such great tie-ins and their joints are so small and the visual effect that they have is purely a DNA thing. It's purely what they were born with. Not a supplement, not a pill, not an oil you inject. That's just what it is. And it's funny because these negative people, uh, you know, will comment like, they'll pick something apart. And it's usually like their calves or forearms or traps. Something that's so 
minuscule, really. I know you, to have a complete physique, you want everything developed, but they'll nitpick and find something as silly as, as that to kind of berate them and, and drag them down. Now, um, the thing is, with, with steroids and taking enhancement, and I've talked about this a lot, even my wife knows about this fact, that some people that are naturally awesome, when they take steroids, they don't blow up like you would imagine. They're naturally, cra they're crazy naturally. Sometimes they take steroids and you're like, that's, that's it? And they're probably like, that's it too. They expected themselves to turn into Ronnie Coleman or whatever. And then you have guys that don't look like anything too special naturally, but they respond so well with muscle mass and just gaining raw mass at a rapid rate. Just because they're androgen receptors or what have you, um, it's just, it's different. So just because a guy's good genetically, naturally, doesn't mean that he's gonna blow up and turn into Mr. Olympia once he's enhanced. Although, you know, Kai Greens and Ronnie Coleman's that were natural definitely blew up to be top tier bodybuilders, but that's not always the, the case. I'm sure there were some guys, I don't know how Dorian Yates looked as a team, but I think I saw a couple pictures of him, but he, he turned into one of the freakiest bodybuilders of the whole time. Um, not sure how he looked natural. Uh, he might be one of those guys. So. I don't know why some people are so negative. I don't know why they can't comprehend that people do lurk out there that are amazing. I, I attribute it to maybe just they're insecure about their own genetic potential or lack thereof. And so they, they just can't accept the cold hard fact that people are just better. I, like I said, I was very lucky that I got to witness this stuff firsthand. And it set me up to be realistic throughout my whole entire bodybuilding career when I was competing. And I knew that I had the strongest mindset and I also knew that some of these genetic guys didn't have what I had up here. So therefore they can get by with cheating and coming in a little soft and all that stuff. And you have a chance to beat these guys. But far as being negative and just calling everyone bullshit and saying that's not possible, you don't have a surveillance camera on these people and, and you don't have direct proof. I don't see why you're gonna scrutinize them and basically call them liars and whatnot, you know? So, that's my take on it. It's a little frustrating to see this happen in, in the industry. I don't know why people can't be more positive and just accept that some people are better, but the delusions and reality of steroid cycling and most importantly genetics is, is something that's prevalent in this industry. And believe it, they're out there. There's people that are just genetically better than you.